So now I'm going to work on a tracer for this particular shot. You see all the camera movement. You don't really see the ball. So it's a significant hook in this shot. And we're going to put a tracer on it. So I'm going to first of all import the video to Shot Tracer Pro and let the magic now happen. So we have automatic camera stabilization turned on, which means that the system will stabilize the movement of the phone first and then try to trace the ball flight. In this particular video, we can't trace much because, well, we can't see much. But nevertheless, the software should have created a very good camera stabilization for us in this video. Now I'm going to go do my keyframes. So I'm going to set my impact frame. I'm going to position the first couple of frames as see the ball. Now I don't see it for a few frames. Nevertheless, I'm just going to hit spacebar until I see it again. Up there it is. I see it. I'm going to go back a little bit. I don't want, don't want to skip too many frames. So here's the first frame. I see it. And then I just keep on keyframing. Now I can zoom in right here and continue setting keyframes where the bulk position is. And I keep on doing this for as long as I can see the ball. In this instance, I can see it for quite a while actually. And I continue doing keyframes. Now, if you don't see the ball for such a long period of time, don't worry about it. Just do for as long as you can actually see it and then you can go ahead and set the landing point. Here we can nicely see it all the way on the way down. Um, great camera for zoom is the iPhone Pro Max 15 because it has a, I think, a 5x optical zoom, which is incredible. But these kind of shots continue that. And the ball is has landed here, so I'll do this as my last keyframe. Then I set the landing spot and create line. And what we have here is a awesome tracer. So let me make a bigger line here. This one will make smaller. And now let's check it out. Looks great. Perfect. And look at the camera tracking. I didn't have to do anything in terms of camera tracking. That's fantastic. So this is really awesome. And what's really great is that I can use the slider right here and really see every point in the camera tracking. That's so cool. Now what's even cooler is the fact that I can add little pop-ups and um, Add, for example, a distance counter. Let's add a distance counter, fly out distance. And we say it's a 189 or 164 yard shot. And we now attach this to the start of the ball, make it a little bit bigger. So it starts bigger. And look at this. It attaches to the line with camera tracking. How cool is this? And there's nothing essentially I, that I need to do in terms of doing camera tracking. Do you see how it like tracks the camera correctly? And all the motion blur that you have in, especially here, like check out this motion blur. Like how motion blurred is this part? And the fact that the camera tracking does such a good job in stabilizing this part of the line is, is mind boggling. Like check this. So um, now that we have done the tracer for that shot, we can also do the roll of the ball. And in this situation, we can see the ball once here, it pop, pops up here, but essentially it then hides itself and reappears somewhere down here. So that's not an ideal ideal shot for a, um, for a continuous ball motion. But here's another example that I just did a few minutes ago. So I have this shot right here and the guy hits it towards the hole and then you see the bounce. And the bounce was basically added using 
um, pot tracer. So I just use this pot tracer feature right here to add the bounce. So as you can see, let's see, pot tracer. So we go uh, add a trajectory. No, we did, we did the tra trajectory for the incoming shot, but then we did pot tracer. So here you can see the keyframes for the pot tracer. And it's also stabilized. So everything in that shot is stabilized. And I can use my slider right here. I can use the slider here to check the stabilization as well, which is super awesome. And then again, if I wanted to add little pop-ups, for example, in this one, let's add a little fly-out uh, distance pop-up with uh, 104, like, I don't know, 98-yard shot. Oh, I have the mask turned on, so I'll turn it off. 98, but it becomes bigger because it's coming towards us. I'm going to set the end scale to uh, 2. And let's have a look at this. It's rendering a little slow because I'm also doing, um, what's it called, uh, screen recording. But super cool stuff here. And it's so easy to do, like it's really automated. Sometimes I have to do keyframes, but for example, I don't have to do keyframes on shots where you can actually see the ball. And let me pull one up here just to give an example. This would be one of them. So you can see here, oh, that's a bad shot. He hits a little bit to the left, but um, you can see the ball flight in this particular golf shot. So I didn't have to do any keyframing. So you can see this, this is what he got. This says tracking and camera stabilization in one. Looks really good. Just remember, I'm doing a screen recording, so the rendering here is much slower. So I'm gonna zoom in, and you see how the tracer is stabilized. I didn't have to do anything. I can adjust the landing point if I wanted to, or I can come here and set the flight time, for example. I'll give it a five second flight time, just to give it, and you see the flight time appear on the timeline right here. So this right here, that's when the ball lands. And if you increase it to like seven, you'll see how that moves up. So you have now a new flight time, seven seconds, and that's that's where the line will come to a resting position on the ground. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you.